welcome to class with Mr. Hyde, aka Science Days in Life. Today I will be taking you on my chemistry project class 2021 and my area of emphasis will be on acid base depression. And the major aim of this tutorial is to guide teachers and students on how to achieve the correct endpoint and also to know the likely questions that may come out in this particular exam. But before I start, I would like to show us the apparatuses for today's chemistry particular lesson. Now, here I have uh, my volumetric flask, which I use to prepare the solutions. Now here, solution A is already prepared, this solution A containing my hydrochloric acid, I have my solution B containing the base, probably the unknown solution because one of the solutions must be with unknown what concentration. Now the one with a known concentration is known as the standard solution. Why the solution with an unknown concentration is considered as the unknown solution. All right. Now the indicator we're going to use for Today's particle lesson is methyl orange. It's methyl orange. So today we shall be looking at um, how we can carry out the titration between these two solutions and get an accurate endpoint. Now, for you to achieve an accurate endpoint, there are things you need to observe. Now, one of them is that you must wash your apparatuses with soap solution to avoid concentration error and also you need to make sure that each solution that will be poured in a particular container that you use that same solution to rinse the container to avoid adulterating the solution now when i will be pipetting my base i also need to wash or to rinse my pipette with the base to avoid adulterating the solution. And I will, if I'm using my mouth to pipe it, I will ensure that I don't mix my saliva with the base to avoid adulterating the solution. All right, now without wasting much of your time, let's go to the board and follow the instructions that are written here. Now here on the board, we are told that A is a solution containing 3.8 grams per dm cube of hydrochloric acid and B is a solution containing 1.2 grams per 250 cm dm cube or sorry cm cube of XOH. Now from this question now we can see that A is the standard solution because the concentration is given. So we are going to titrate solution A against solution B. Put A in the burette and titrate it against 20 cm cube to 25 cm portions of B using methyl orange as an indicator. Now the size of the prepared varies. In some places you see 20 cm cube, in some places you see 25 cm cube. So this capacity of the pipette I'm holding here is exactly 25 cm cube. All right. Now we are asked to record the volume of the pipette and tabulate your pipet word readings. So before I go into that, I'll first of all carry out instructions. Go to where I have my setup. So this is a setup. So I have the. I have you can see the burette so i'm going to pour solution a into the burette as instructed so this is my solution a this is my solution a so i will first of all rinse the burette with solution a first of all rinse the burette with solution a so this divide it out the back the short one so i need to put my phone now 
So again, for solution A, so this is solution A. So our poor solution A to raise it. Okay. All right. So usually we pour solution A until we get to the zero mark. Until we get to the zero mark. So I'm starting my initial at the zero mark. And when you are doing that, please always observe the base of the meniscus. Always observe the base of the meniscus. So when you are taking your reading, you will ensure that there is no error due to parallax in observing the meniscus reading. Okay, now I will measure or pipette my base right now. So the base should be 25 cm cubed. Here is solution B and solution B. So don't forget, I will rinse first before I will use the pipette to measure the base. So just a little quantity will be enough. Okay. So, what you can see, alright, so it appears the level of the solution in the pipette is well above the mark on the stem. So, what I'm going to do now is I will amount the pressure amounting on the repair so that the liquid can go down gently. But when I get to that mark, I will increase the pressure so that it will stop exactly at that point. Okay, yes. I have exactly 25 centimeter cube of my solution B. So I will pour it in a conical flask as instructed and then add my methyl orange two to three drops of your methyl orange will be okay for this experiment so here is my methyl orange so i'm going to add two to three drops of the methyl orange one two and i'm done okay so there's the methyl orange so right here So it appears um, the solution, the burette has decreased. Okay, I need to tight, tighten up the clip. All right. So let me refill to the zero mark. Before you start, make sure you remove the funnel. Make sure you remove the funnel. Okay, so um, this is my solution B with methyl orange. So I will place it. Now, the first thing you need to do is to first of all get your rough. Why do we need rough in? titration because it will actually help you to know where your endpoint lies so you first of all carry out a rough titration to get your endpoint so i want you to be seeing what i'm doing so pouring the solution from the burette into the conical flask 
and observe the color changes. Observe the color changes. I hope you can see it clearly. Gently run down the solution. Okay, the color appears and disappears. So you keep doing that until the color change is permanent. Okay, at this point. I need to be careful because it takes time for the color to disappear. So when it starts happening like that, know that you're close to end point. So you need to be careful. Oh yes, I got it. So this is the color change. You can see there's a change in the color showing that end point is reached. So I'll now go to my burette and check the volume of the pipette. That is consumed okay here we have a 28.2 28.2 or 28.3 roughly 28.3 so i will now go to my observation table and record my burette readings okay don't forget i was started with uh, Started from the zero, from the zero end of the pivot. So my initial will be 0, 0.00. Okay. So for the rough, I got 28.20. And um, the volume of acid used at this point will be exactly the difference between the final volume of acid used and the initial volume of acid used. So when I subtract with 8.20 from 0, it's still the same thing as 28.20. Now that I have my rough, I can now repeat the titration, but this time around, I need to be more careful. I need to be more careful because this is the time I will get the actual end point. The rough does not give you the end point, but it helps you to know the range at which the end point can be gotten. Okay, so I am going to refill my burette probably to the zero mark so that I can now carefully, you know, run the titration to achieve my desired end point. So, uh, this is... Uh, Solution A, so it looks like um, I need to carry out a test to know the solution I'm holding. Okay, so just use a little more paper. So this happens sometimes, especially when your solution is not labeled. When you don't label your solution, sometimes you might mix them up. But where such cases arises, you can simply use your litmus paper to know the solution. So this is definitely my solution A because there is no change in the litmus paper. Okay, so I'll go back to my burret and refill. Refill to the zero mark. Refill to the zero mark. Okay, it's well above the zero end. So I'll reduce open the clip. Now this is a short run down. Okay. I think I have it. Then I'll prepare my solution. 
Sono sciolti. Okay, so gently amount the pressure. Alright, I have it. So pour into the beaker. And then and use beaker of conical flask any one that is available. So you add your material range two to three drops. Okay, so so remember that the color of material range in a color medium is yellow. So that's what you see. So I will now carefully run my titration. Now I will allow the acid to run freely from the direct now that i know where my end point lies so when i get to 28 or probably 27.5 i will slow down and add gently and carefully okay so i will allow the base to run down this time around i'll fix my eye on the on the burette i'll fix my eye on the burette and uh, Okay. So, fix my eye on the burette and then allow the solution to run down until when I get to uh, 27.5, close to 28. I need to be careful at this point. So, I'm there already. So, add gently. Three drops for you to have a sharp end point. Drop little at a time. So, and I just need a drop now to get what I'm looking for. Uh -oh. oh, I'm there. So that's a change in color. You can see that. All right. So, what is your reading? Oh, now the reading appears to be 29. 29. So 29, I have 29. So 29 is probably my end point because I did that carefully, you know, to get to this point. All right. So 29 is the end point. So what do you do with the 29? Most times I tell students, instead of you doing first title, doing second title, doing third title, you can as well do what we call manipulation. You can manipulate with the first reading that you have, the first end point that you got from your period. You can actually manipulate using the error margin of plus or minus 0 0.1 or plus or minus 0 0.2. You can use that to get other values. Instead of you know, wasting your solutions, instead of wasting your energy, you can use this value, this 28 point, uh, this 29.0 that I got, I can add or subtract plus or minus 0 0.1 to produce other data values. In the normal sense, all the values are supposed to be the same. But for the fact that you're a human being, there must be error in your experiment. So we create room for that. Alright, so let's go to the board and then complete the the other aspect of our question and that is the calculation aspect so we are going to let me move this away so that we have great enough space all right so now to work. i hope you can see all right so we have a uh, our end point to be 
Jerusalem. And um, we started from 0, 0.00 our initial. And um, when we subtract, we get 29.00. So just fill your initial with 0 0.00. Everything is 0 0.00. So here I can add or subtract. I can add or subtract 0 0.1 or 0 0.2. Alright, so let me make this 0 0.1. By adding 0 0.1 to this one, I'll get 29.10. Uh, By adding 0 0.2 to this one, I will get 29.20. Okay, so when I subtract, I have 29.10. When I subtract, I have um, 29.20. So I'm done with my table. So we're going to answer the question that says, Calculate the average volume of acid used. Calculate the average volume of acid used. So how do I find the average? How do I do my averaging? You simply add first title, second title, and third title. Please remember, when you are averaging, you don't add your off. You don't add your off. That's why most times, it's only expedient for you to do it, to cross you know the rough you can't see it so that you will not be tempted to pick value from that side okay average volume of acid used average volume of acid used we simply say 29.100 plus 29.10 plus 29.20 so we divide by three because we have three concordant words titles. So we divide by three. So when you divide this value by three, what are you going to get? So we have um, 29.30, 29.10. So that means you are going to get 29.10 CNQ. So the average volume, which is VA, is equal to what? 29. Point one zero, twenty nine point what one zero. So let me just shift uh, my camera a bit closer to the board so you can see what I am doing there. Okay, so we have uh, twenty nine point nine zero. I hope you can see clearly from that point. Twenty nine point nine zero. All right, so. Now, the next question we have the same is to calculate the concentration of A in mole per DMQ. Already the question, the concentration of A is in gram per DMQ. And whenever you want to change the concentration of a solution from gram per DMQ to mole per DMQ, you simply apply the formula N is equal to small m over what? Capital M. I will explain. What does small m represent? The mass of the solution which here is given as what? 3.8 grams. Okay, so the molar mass of HCl is 36.5, we all know. So N will be equal to 3.8 divided by 36.5. 3.8 divided by 36.5. And then with our calculator, we can carry out that division. 3.8 divided by 36.5. So we uh, have uh, 3.8 divided by 36.5. So that will give us up 0 0.10. So the molar concentration of solution A is 0 0.1 mole per DMQ. Okay, so for us to find the concentration of B in mole per DMQ, we simply employ the formula. I hope you can see from there. We simply employ the formula CA, CAVA over CBVB. That's equal to NA over what? NB. So our, the concentration of, of A in mole per DMQ is the result we got here. So I will substitute. 
the volume of acid, which is VA, is simply the volume, the average volume we got, which is 29.10. Then the CB, which is the conceptual base, is the question that we are to act, to answer. And then uh, VB is the volume of the pipette used. So how do I get the number of moles of base of acid used and the number of moles of base used in this experiment? I can simply get this from the equation of the reaction. Usually, the examiner will write the equation of the reaction. So the equation of the reaction you now involving HCl and the base XOH is given as stops. HCl plus XOH will give us what? XCl plus water. Okay, so the molar ratio of the base to the acid is 1 is to 1. So Na is equal to 1. So when they get the 1, the coefficient of the HCl. So number of moles of base used is also 1. When they get the, the num number of moles of base that we have there from the coefficient, that is the number you have here. Alright, so I will then apply it in this my formula to calculate my CB. All right, so uh, let me clean this part so that we we'll have enough space to write. All good. So, um to substitute this, we need to know that CA is 0 0.1, VA is 29.1 cm cube, CB is the unknown, VB is the volume of the pipette, which is 25 cm cube. So don't forget, number of moles of acid are reacted one, number of moles of base are reacted one. So we substitute in this formula to get what we are looking for. So we have 0 0.1, which is CA, times VA, which is 29.1, divided by CB times 25. That is equal to 1 over 1. So we have um, 0 0.1, we have 0 0.1 times... 29.1, 29.1, 29.1. So 0 0.1 times 29.1 will give me 2.91. Then, when you multiply 25 by CB, you have 25 CB. Okay? So, I will now cross multiply. So we have um, CB, it will be 29.1 divided by 25, 29.2.9, sorry, 2.91, divided by 25. So, my calculator will help me at this point, so I need to carry out the division. So, 2.91, 2.91, divided by 25, that will give me 0 0.1. 0 0.11 or 12 approximately that this will be 0 0.12 mole per dm cube. So that's the concentration of B. Alright, now the next question here says we should find the molar mass of SOH. How do we find the molar mass of SOH? So first of all, we look for the amount of the base that reacted. We look for the amount of the base that reacted. How do I get that? I will use the formula N is equal to CV over 1000 to achieve that. So if I use the formula N is equal to CV over 1000, I hope you can see from there. Now the concentration I got for CV is 0 0.12. Now now multiply by the volume of the pipette used, which is 25, divided by 1,000. So, 
the amount of the base in 25 cm cube of the solution is 0 0.12 times 25 equals 3 divided by 1000. That will give me 0 0.03. 0 0.03. 0 0.003. Okay? Alright, so that's the amount of the base in 25 cm cube of the solution. Then, for me to now find the, the molar mass, I need the reacting mass. And how do I get the reacting mass? At this point, how do I get the reacting mass? You get the reacting mass by simply multiplying the mass. Remember that in the question we are told that 1.2 grams of XOH is present in 250 cm cube of the solution. So you can see that on the board. You can see that on the board. So 1.2 grams is present in 250 cm cube of the solution. So what do we need to do with that? And I say if 1.2 grams if 1.2 grams is present in 250 cm cube of the solution, therefore x grams of XOH is present in 1 dm cube or 1000 cm cube of the solution. I'm not saying that x dm cube is present in 1000 cm and simply cross multiply to find the value of x. So to find the value of x, To find the value of x, to find the value of x, I will simply cross multiply. So x will be equal to 1000 times 1.2 divided by 250. Divided by 250. Okay. So that means I have 250 to 1000 give me four. Four times 1.2 will give me uh, 4.8. 4.8. So 4.8 grams. So this is exactly the mass concentration of the base in 1,000 cm cube of the solution. Okay. Now, if you Apply the formula N is equal to small m over capital word N. And we are looking for capital M. So capital M represents the molar mass of the base. So capital M will be equal to small m, which is the reacting mass, which is this, over amount. And that will give us 4.8 divided by 0 0.03. 0 point what? 0 0.03. So when we divide 4.8 by 0 0.03 4.8 divided by 0 0.03 that will give us the molar mass of the of the base so 0 0.03 So we, we got this amount in 25 cm cube of the solution. And we are looking for the amount of the base in, um, in exactly 1000 cm cube, which is the same thing as the concentration of B. So by the time we divide this by the amount present in, um, in 1000 cm cube, which is 0.12, that will give us the molar mass of uh, B. So 4.8 divided by 0 0.12 that will give us 40. That will give us 40. So the molar mass of B is 40. The molar mass of solution B is 40 gram per mole. 
Okay, we, we can now use that question, this answer that we got here, to answer the question that says, calculate the relative atomic mass of X. Calculate the relative atomic mass of X. Calculate the relative atomic mass of X. So how do we find the relative atomic mass of X? Remember that the formula for the base is XOH. So the molar mass is 40 grams. So by the time I equate this to 40, and I know the atomic weight of oxygen and hydrogen, I will now substitute. So we have X plus 16 plus 1 is equal to 40. So X plus 16 plus 1 is what 17 is equal to 40. So X will be equal to 40 minus 17. And that will give us 23. So the molar mass of, I mean the relative atomic mass of X is 23. Okay, now let's go to the next question. And the next question says, if you find the mass of HCl present in 500 cm cube of the solution. 500, find the mass of HCl present in 500 cm cube of the solution. Okay, how do we answer that question? We're looking for mass and we have volume. So first of all, we need to find our amount, which is N. N is equal to what? CV over what? 1000. Already we have the concentration of solution A, which is 0 0.1, 1000 uh, CMQ. So we simply need to substitute to find the amount of the acid, which is um, 0. Uh, we got 0 0.1, right? So times 500 divided by 1000. So this will go with this, I have 2. So by the time you divide your 0 0.1 by 2, that will give you 0 0.05. So 0 0.05 is the amount of HCl in 500 cm cube of the solution. So now I can use it now to find the mass of HCl in that volume. So mass will be equal to um, amount times molar mass. Don't forget that the molar mass of HCl is 36.5. So the uh, number of moles of acid in 500 cm cube times the molar mass, which is 36.5. And that will give us 0 0.05 times 36.5. 0 0.05 times 36.5. 0 0.05 times 36.5. That will give me approximately 1.8. Approximately 1.8 grams. So, we have 1.8 grams of HCl in 500 cm cube of the solution. And that brings us to the end of today's practical lesson. Please subscribe to my channel to get updates. Just click on the red button and then you're on. So more practical lessons will come up on this platform and I'll post it. We still have our salt analysis, which I am going to post in a short time. I will upload it here. Thank you and God bless you.